Welcome. My name is Mike Gordon, and I am here with two intrepid explorers who go looking for species of animals that most people think don't exist anymore. Mr. Peter Beach, Mr. Milt Marcy. Milt and Peter went on an expedition many years ago um, to Papua New Guinea looking for an animal that most people think extinct, and most recently they have sought the same animal out here in the United States. Pete, tell us what exactly you were looking for, what the animal was and... Well, to, to start it out, I didn't think the animal existed in the United States. I thought that was pure fantasy. Okay. So when a friend of mine, Philip O'Donnell, called Milt, and Milt called me, the question was, would you like to go talk to this guy who says he saw a pterosaur in Yakima, and, uh, or Yakima River? And I thought, no, not interested. That's fantasy. Milt, tell us what, why we went, or why you think we went. Well, first of all, tell us what a pterosaur is. So, Well, I think probably the stereotypical thing that people think of is a, a, a creature with a, l long sculpted wings that go a little bit forward and then way back, and then halfway out they've got a claw, looks like a hand. Uh, and then uh, their head has a huge crest back here and a real long beak. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I think that would be the most distinctive feature. Lar large leathery wings. L yeah, no hair or feathers, uh, leathery wings. Uh, so you guys went off on an expedition for an animal that most people think died not a few years ago, millions of years ago. Were you a, a little bit, how could this be, or skeptical about this? I mean, how did you end up even going to look for this thing? Well, Pete kind of set it up. Um, we were told that somebody had a sighting there. Okay. And, of course, we don't believe in millions of years, so uh, it seemed like a possibility. Um, it's, I thought if, if somebody would go to the effort, this fellow contacted his friend, who he knew was a creationist and would be interested in this type of thing, that fellow contacted uh, Mike uh, 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 Philip O'Donnell, and then uh, Philip contacted us. So the, it had to there had to be quite a bit of effort to just get to that point. Mm -hmm. So if somebody would go to that much effort to try to get somebody up there to look at it, I figured well, he, he deserves to have it checked out. Uh, and you know, it was, so I figured, well, I haven't been up there for a while, and kind of be fun to just go up and see what it looks like up there. And uh, so away we went. And uh, when we got there, uh, we uh, met with him and his friend, and he explained his sighting to us, how it happened, a couple of them, a couple sightings, and where it happened. And uh, then uh, we were quite shocked when we went back to the same tree that he saw it in and had quite a great sighting ourselves. All right, this is exciting. So you, you head up, you get up there, you get camped. What do you do? How does it start? How do you go looking for a pterosaur? Well, we parked by the side of the road and uh, we saw these trees and this one particular tree. Uh, it was pointed out that the animal was in the tree overlooking the, the river. This is the Yakima River. This is Yakima by River. Yakima, Washington. Well, it's sort of in the middle. It's it's actually just a couple of miles north of Benton City, which is um, just west of the Tri Cities area. Okay. Okay. So, sitting right on the limb, practically, of the tree uh, was a cormorant. And my mind just went, it was a cormorant. There's no doubt in my mind it was a cormorant. Well, not a waste of time. It's kind of fun to do these things. And, uh, but he miss, you know, it looks like a snaky sort of bird. Mm -hmm. You ever see the pictures? Mm -hmm. Real snaky head, and it's got a beak on it that curves down, uh, kind of big, big uh, beady eyes. Anyway, that was it for me. I don't know. What did you think, Milt, when you saw the cormorant or you saw the tree? Um, I don't remember actually uh, what my thoughts were on seeing the cormorant, but 
I, I kind of just remained with an open mind. And I thought, well, later on when we come back, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. So, so we, came, we went back, back later. We went back about dusk. And uh, we got out of the car. We were walking toward the car. Tell what you saw. Well, uh, what I remember is we parked um, about 75 yards away, something like that. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of the road, and Pete and my son, Matt, and I all got out of the car at the same time, but as we were getting out, um, there was this explosion of light in the tree. It was same like, tree, yeah, where the cormorant was. Right. Okay. It just looked like the tree lit up with fire, but of course it wasn't consuming fire. Mm -hmm. It was just a very, like, like a flashbulb going off on the old flashbulb uh, cameras. White, red, uh, yellow? As I remembered, it was white. And and the, mm. the was, well, we also in New Guinea saw a ball lightning. I had never seen that before. Okay. Uh, and it was similar to that in a way. Just an explosion uh, of light. Yeah, an okay. explosion of light. And when it moves, <clears throat> there's a persistence of vision that goes with it where you actually see a streak. You don't see individual pulses of this light. You just see a streak of light. And it, it hits your eyes so, it's so bright mm -hmm. that it almost leaves a an imprint on your eyes it was so bright. So the tree lights up and now you've got this line. Did it fly yeah. out and go fly yeah. away? Yeah, it flew, flew off toward our upriver. And you could watch the light go yeah. up the river. Yeah. And well, no, no, out. no. It stopped right over the, uh, over the top of the tree. Okay. But there was obviously some some animal had just left that tree. And of course, uh, we had uh, read up and, and seen some videos prior to that about the people that had been over to uh, Papua New Guinea and really researched these creatures and read about the lights. Mm -hmm. They're bioluminescent. And uh, the, the natives over there will tell you uh, it's one of the first things they mention about this creature when you ask them to describe it is that it lights up at night. Mm -hmm. So, pretty good uh, sign to us that, yep, yeah, that's Tursar. Right? So what happened next? <laughs> well, from that point on, it was, uh, let's go back, right? Yeah, we were we were hooked. At, <laughs> at, at that point. Yeah. yeah, that'd be hard not to be hooked. <laughs> so... Okay, you've seen this. This is all one afternoon, and that was it? Or did you see more the next day? What what happened next? Well, this was uh, dusk when, uh, when we saw this. Right. We hung around for, I don't know, a couple more hours. Okay. Uh, hoping to see. I don't think we saw anything further that evening, though. No. But, we, but since it was the exact same tree that Johnny had had two sightings at, okay. now he saw, he, he saw it. In the very early morning hours on his drive to work um, it, and it was the time of year when the sun comes up really early mm -hmm. and uh, so the creature was sitting on the limb I, I assume trying to catch fish out of the river and uh, on two different occasions he didn't believe his eyes the first time okay. but the second day he saw it sitting there during the daylight hours uh, that's when he figured I'm gonna tell somebody about this and so he got a hold of his friend Sean Sean contacted Philip and Philip contacted us. So that's how it happened. So what happened next after you saw it that in the afternoon and went back home and scratched your heads, then got up the next day, what'd you do? Well, we planned another trip back, uh, obviously. Um, and uh, uh, we didn't do a very good job of, uh, of uh, planning out how to, how to really did, well, it's kind of like what, what you were talking about, your uh, your learning curve going up to Lake Okanagan. Um, we had a learning curve here, and uh, I had to learn a little bit about night vision and how it works and how this particular, we call it light, mm -hmm. uh, how that works. Um, so um, on a number of, we had a number of trips back up there after that, and we had a number of times we saw the light. And uh, one thing I noticed, uh, in particular, one one time, uh, I saw a light way down river, and it was moving. I could tell it was moving toward us, getting closer and closer. 
So I'm thinking, okay, this creature is going to fly right by us, mm -hmm. and we're going to get a good view of it, um, probably around midnight. Mm -hmm. And um, but instead of getting all the way to us, it dropped down and either landed on the water or was sitting on the water on the other side of the river, uh, maybe a uh, hundred yards away from us. And it's, and then the light came on. And the light would come on, and then it, it would go off for a minute or two. Then it'd come back on for a couple of minutes. And uh, so um, I, th I thought, oh, wow, that's, that's so bright. Mm -hmm. uh, why can't we see? Well, you would think the light that it's making would light up everything around it, and you'd be able to see it. But that wasn't the case. And, uh, but I did have binoculars under my chair, and I grabbed those, and I thought, okay, now I'm going to really see it, you know. Couldn't see it any better than I could see it without the binoculars. I could see the light, but could not make out the form. On our way home, and I was puzzling about that. I was thinking about the lightning bugs that we used to have back on the farm in Kansas. Or fireflies. Fireflies, mm -hmm. yeah. And every now and then you would smash one on your hand and you could smear the luciferase around and make designs on your hand and stuff. And it would glow. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but if you took that and you tried to light something up, nothing, and there's no light emanating from it. So you think it's bioluminescence that you were seeing? Exactly, yeah. Ah, okay. And bioluminescence is way different than a light bulb. Mm -hmm. Totally different thing. Okay. I uh, drew up here um, a few things that we should note for this uh, video. Uh, this is the area we're talking about. It's uh, in the Yakima Valley. Okay. The Yakima River starts clear up in here in Washington, comes down here, enters uh, the uh, Columbia River around Pasco, and it goes out to the ocean. So it's in this region right in here that we've done our research. It just so happens that this area right in here, uh, during the summers, gets an influx of... Um, tropical birds. It's um, sort of warmer uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there, the river has many uh, species of fish and because of that I think it, it draws these uh, animals from down south okay. and uh, uh, pelicans, cormorants and so forth that you don't see other parts of the uh, of the of Washington and Oregon. Interesting. Mm -hmm. At any rate, this is the river. Uh, we would set up somewhere like this. Uh, this is our typical place. We, we went to many places, but this is just sort of typical. I wanted to, uh, some of our more memorable sightings. Uh, the one that Milt was talking about is here. It went from up the river, it was going down the river. We were here, going down the river. It looked like it was gonna pass us, but went into uh, an area uh, be, uh, near some uh, brush mm -hmm. and trees. And uh, tell us about that and, and the sounds we heard that one time. Oh. Um, oh, they make sounds, not just visual. They make a, okay. You better believe it. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, well, it was off to my right and I saw the light come down the hill. And uh, then it, there was a, some brush that, uh, that was blocking my view and it went down so I couldn't see it anymore. I figured it landed on the other side of the river uh, upstream from us a ways. Um, but it wasn't long after it went out of view that we started hearing this god awful sound. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, um, it was really loud. Mm -hmm. And I figured, well, okay, that's coming from that creature. And um, so it, and it went on for a while. So I figured, okay, I'm going to walk down there, see if I can get close enough. And by that time, I had a night vision camera. Uh -huh. And uh, so I thought, okay, now we can use that night vision camera. Mm -hmm. Didn't have that before. Uh, it's all part of the learning curve. Right. Um, so I'm walking down through the brush, trying to be as quiet as possible. And, uh, Pete stayed back. Um, and, uh, eventually when I thought I was getting very close, the sound stopped abruptly. Well, you're right about in here. 
Yeah, and I uh, I waited. I figured it might start back up. Uh, so I waited maybe five minutes. Didn't start back up. So um, walked back to uh, where Pete was. And, of course, then we realized, well, we could have turned the camera on, at least got the sound mm -hmm. on the camera. But, again, the learning curve. Uh, but then you can explain further on that. Well, uh, I didn't see the light, but I heard this sound and this the sound he made a pretty good <laughs> it sounded pretty much like that i sounded I, like a sounded like a just like a pterosaurus to me well <laughs> it, it was kind of like a crow but it was like a a jet crow yeah and a jet engine crow and a little bit of a uh, mountain lion cougar kind of mixed together and uh i, I tried to make that sound. I walked down the next day and I said, listen to me, I'm gonna scream as loud as I can. And I did. Now I can get about 60 decibels is what it works out to, 60 decibels. And they could hardly hear me. Which means that the sound of this thing was something on the range of a jet engine. Hmm. Really loud. And I don't know how you get that much sound out of something that's probably not that big. I mean, it's it's not the size of uh, an airplane, or maybe it is. I don't know, but uh, it it was certainly a, a sound that was out of perspective, different than anything you'd ever heard, and have never heard. Again. No, I haven't heard it since. No. And the volume was astonishing. I know I have a, a, a bird, a pet bird, a macaw, and they can go off pretty good. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine. A bird. How big are these birds? You think they are? Two feet. Five feet, head to tail? Well, the problem, <clears throat> we can tell you about the ones in Papua New Guinea. Uh, but on the Yakima, the problem is we have not seen it during the daylight hours. Now, Johnny did, but I don't remember what Johnny said about the size. Do you remember that? No, I'm trying to get a hold of Johnny and get that information. I'd like him to draw a picture of it. But uh, he, he has kind of pulled himself back because... He's been explaining this to other people for 10 years, and now he's come to the point where he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. They think he's nuts. <laughs> okay. He said, yes. he, he told me it, that uh, people think that he's fallen on his head too many times. Mm -hmm. I completely uh, can see what he's, th what he's saying is, I can uh, sympathize with him. You went in as a skeptic. Yeah. Now you're a believer. Yeah, well, the, when I saw that, sound or saw the, the light when i saw the light i couldn't believe it i well that was unbelievable uh i looked at my you know friends and i said did you see that they all saw it and i thought wow i can't believe that what i've just seen now i don't know if it's a pterosaur but that is something really out of this world yeah he's talking about the first time we saw it mm -hmm. uh matt saw it Pete saw it, I saw it, all at the same time. And it was, I mean, it was something that... Uh, okay, the two of you have made an expedition to Papua New Guinea, we've made reference to it, in search of the same animal. And you saw that animal, and it, if I remember correct from previous conversations, it had a glowing chest, is that correct? <clears throat> Well, uh, the, uh, the sighting that, that I'm talking about, we had a daytime sighting. And, of course, we didn't see any light then. Um, but Pete, and, and I didn't see the nighttime sighting. Pete had some nighttime sightings in Papua New Guinea, okay. and he saw the light there. Um, so he can explain that better. Well, I saw both white, which were high, and the mm -hmm. sky light streaks, basically. Mm -hmm. not, a, not a dot moving, but like a streak. Okay. Below the horizon. Below okay. the horizon and above the horizon, but the ones below the horizon are quite believable. Mm -hmm. The ones above the horizon, okay, maybe there were shooting stars, who knows. But then I saw a red streak uh, going down off of uh, Mount Atta, down to a valley. This is a, in the dark. Mm -hmm. I could see the red streak going down, and I could see the red streak five minutes later going back up. So they, uh, they are able to adjust the, the frequency of their light. Uh, I don't know how. I can't explain it. It sounds nuts. But so this color was white. That one was red. Red. Mm -hmm. 
At any rate, uh, we've had uh, other sightings. Uh, for example, this is the Yakima River where we were at. We had a sighting that came down just like that. If you just impress just this in light. your mind, you're looking upriver. There's uh, trees on both sides. That streak was that wide and it was that long. Okay. I, that's a simulation. That's not a, a natural picture. Mm -hmm. I just tried to simulate it so you get the picture of uh, how long these streaks are mm -hmm. and below the horizon. Okay. And uh, we, I think it's probably something like a bombardier beetle. It has two sacks of, of chemicals and it can control the sacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it spews out a string of this material and then it lights off at some point, it oxidizes and takes off like a, oh, a fuse, you know. And whoop, the fuse is very fast, much faster than the animal or any animal could fly. Into, oh, okay, so you think that they lay out the material and then it lights up yeah. after they've yeah. gone by? I've even, not seen, them. I've even seen drips. I've even seen drips off of the streaks. Fascinating. Um, to finish off of what other sites we've seen, we've seen them coming out of the hills on the other side of the river. We've seen them go from the, uh, the hills on the other side of the river down to the river. I've seen uh, two animals about two seconds apart uh, go from just off of where we were sitting or laying and going into a pair of trees down at this end. So this is about a quarter of a mile. So the streaks were just less than a quarter of a mile long and there was one streak going into the tree and then followed with it within a minute or second or two, another streak. So it wasn't the first streak, oh, what did I see? The second streak, oh, now I know what I'm seeing. They're two animals. Uh, we also saw uh, what I call uh, light bulbs or flash bulbs uh, above us, over the river, boom, a light flashed on like a strobe light, very, very bright, uh, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. And then a second or two later, another one like that. Now you'd say, okay, you had a aneurysm or you're, you, know, <laughs> you're, you had a stroke or something like that. But there was associated with each one of these screaming of the nighthawks. The nighthawks were up feeding on bugs and their bats feeding on bugs. I mean, we can see all of these animals up there. Uh, at least at some point we can see the bats and we can see or hear these uh, nighthawks. The nighthawks scream, pop, scream, pop, scream. So I think maybe they're, this animal that makes the light was also feeding on these um, nighthawks. So what's your conclusion to all this? Do you think there's a Cerasaurus up there? Yeah. I and think are you any plans to go back? I think it feeds on the river mostly, but it also feeds in the air. We also saw lights that were on the other side of the river. Milt will corroborate this, that would go on and then you'd hear a, a splash or maybe it was at the same time as the light went off, you'd hear a splash as if something was feeding right there. And then you'd see no light, and then maybe a minute or two later you see a light again. Well, you know, when you think about that, uh, you've probably seen nature shows where they talk about the deep sea fish that are bioluminescent. Mm -hmm. And they have, usually it's out on the end of their nose. Mm -hmm. And and they use it to lure yes. uh, smaller fish that they can eat. And I'm thinking, this is the same thing going on here. It's using that light to lure uh, fish in, or, or maybe bugs, or who knows what else, maybe small birds. Uh, but uh, I, that, I'm, I'm thinking that it uses it the same way. In the United States that you know of, this is Yakima, which is just astounding that uh, you would think something like that is here in the United States. You always think it's in Papua New Guinea or somewhere else. Yeah. Do you think there are more of those uh, in other areas of the state? Have there been any other sightings or is that the hot spot? 
Well, I think there are plenty of sightings. Uh, I don't think all of them are um, anybody knows about. They just hold it in. What's, a, what's that streak? What's that light that just passed in front of us or overhead or, or across the river or something mm -hmm. like that? You just pass it off as, yeah, I don't know what that was. And sometimes there are daytime sightings. There have been probably hundreds of sightings in the U.S., mostly in the western United States. But uh, the, uh, Philip documented uh, some very good uh, testimony from up here. Mount Adams uh, right uh, here. Well, no, up in the Olympic Peninsula area. Oh, yeah. Um, and then um, uh, where else in the northwest? Um, well, you had the John Day area. Mm -hmm. uh, where you saw some lights. Uh, all, but there have been uh, recorded sightings in several places in California, uh, Texas, even as far east as the Great Lakes. So, um, yeah. That, uh, I'm thinking that probably there's a rookery down in Mexico in Zacatecas State uh, because there have been many, many sightings in Zacatecas in a certain area in the mountains there. Mm. And uh, so I'm thinking probably once they get to a certain size, then they, they move out to other areas. Uh, but uh, that's all just a theory. So what's the future hold? Any plans to go back? Oh, yes. We go back every year. I went back every month this year, every two weeks. Um, no luck. Um, apparently, the it, it, I haven't... I haven't been able to reproduce any of the lights for almost four years now. Hmm, but interesting. It, an interesting thing is, um, three or four years ago, people started talking about seeing lights over here in the Mount Adams area. That's right here. Um, uh, so just to the west of where we were, um, on the south side of Mount Adams, they started talking about seeing flying saucers but but many of the lights were below the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking maybe um, our creature moved a bit west, uh, maybe for a little bit more solitude. Okay. Um, let's see, one last, one last thing. I think the animal looks something like this. Okay. I think it is probably a ramparinkoid. It's probably the size of a goose, something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe the wingspan of a human would be more like it. Okay. They move very fast. They're very agile. Um, probably has a tail. But um, I don't want to say anything more about that. That's all speculation. And, and what's this picture in the corner? We yeah. don't know. It may be a real thing or it may not. I, I, say, okay. I think he's... This, I think, is, is fraud. Okay. Uh, somebody uh, was trying to mimic uh, one of these creatures. Yeah, we don't want to make any big deal out of, you know, what it really looks like because we don't know. Interesting. Fascinating. So you went from non-believer to believer and you've been back every other, every two weeks for four years. Well, mostly in the summers. Yeah. But, you know, the spring, summer, a little bit in the fall. All right. But the sighting we had in Papua New Guinea was a daytime sighting. Okay. And we weren't able to see great detail in that sighting because it was up in the sky a ways, and it was corkscrewing on the uh, thermal, trying mm -hmm. to gain height. Mm -hmm. And so the longer we watched it, the farther away from us it got. But we could make out the shape uh, of those wings like, what Pete showed here. Mm -hmm. uh, they go up a little bit and then they go back and then you see these knobs halfway out on the, maybe not halfway, but a part way out on the wings. Which are uh, like or fingers. Yeah, which you can see those distinctly. Uh, we could see those. Um, I'm thinking, because we could not see the head, I'm thinking it flies with its neck bent back and it head, the head over the body. Okay. Um, and that's probably why we couldn't see the head. Um, but man, I, when we were looking at that, I'm thinking, yeah, that's definitely a pterosaur. And uh, I was feeling very privileged to have the sighting and very 
sad that I didn't remember my camera was there at the hut. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. These uh, Pete, uh, Peter Beach and Milt Marcy are going to be going out looking for these animals again, and we will be having more of these videos. But uh, if you'd like to get in touch with him, you can go to the website and uh, uh, contact them and talk with them. And if you'd like to become a, a hunter too, uh, I'm sure they'd be glad to to share with you some of their knowledge. Thank you for joining us.